Mayor Elick Breed, please have a seat. And give it up once again for the Yao Kung Moon Kung Fu Sport Association Lion Dancers. And that, San Francisco, is how you make an entrance. And now for the invocation, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Rabbi Beth Singer of Congregation Emmanuel and the Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown of Third Baptist Church. This is a historic day in San Francisco. I, Rabbi Beth Singer of Congregation Emmanuel, stand side by side with Reverend Amos Brown of Third Baptist Church. Our presence here together on this occasion is, of course, symbolic. You know we are here to deliver a prayer. But Reverend Brown and I, we are a prayer. A prayer that prays, along with all of our interfaith partners, for women and men of all skin colors, all religions, no religions, all sexual identities, all genders, all political affiliations, all nationalities and ethnicities, to see the beauty in our differences. We are a prayer to unite for the good and today we pray and invoke the sacred presence as we witness the historic swearing in of the smart, gracious, empathic, politically savvy, get the job done, Mayor London Breed. We call upon you, creator of the universe, with a prayer and a thank you. We thank you for the gift of all life, for enabling each of us to reach this moment in time. It has been a tough year for love, generosity, and goodness. Each time we thought it was as bad as it could be, it got worse. More division, more injustice, more hate. We prayed, please, God, send us some kind of hope. Can you just send us a sign, and you did! The young girl who grew up in public housing and is now going to be our mayor, she is the answer to our prayers. In a city which is increasingly inhospitable to our African-American citizens. Our populace voted in London Breed as our top choice among many excellent choices to lead our city. Thank you, God, for miracles. Now we, the people of San Francisco, ask you to fill us with strength and purpose as we partner with Mayor Breed to do the hard work to address the fundamental problems that plague this and so many other cities throughout our country. We are your partners and we are Mayor Breed's partners in repairing the world. Together with Mayor Breed, we commit to housing our homeless. We commit to bringing about racial justice. We commit to increasing positive relationships between our police officers and community members. And we commit to caring for each person, especially the most vulnerable and dispossessed. 
We know the task is great, but we the workers are willing. If we managed to come together to elect this excellent mayor, we can come together now to be her full partners as we invest in our city by the bay. In the Jewish tradition, we say Shehechianu. Thank you, God, for giving us life, for answering our prayer with Mayor London Breed, for sustaining us, and for bringing us and our mayor to this moment in time. And my friends, this moment in time is more than a symbolic moment. Mm -hmm. It is a moment of great substance. For I must remind you, or inform you, that we are here as brother and sister. And as Tennyson says in Ulysses, I am a part of all that I have met. And we are who we are today, standing here together as brother and sister. Because there were some meetings in yesteryears. After all, the congregation that Rabbi Beth Singer is a co-senior rabbi, along with her husband, Rabbi Jonathan Singer, was founded in 1850 during the gold rush days. And the historic Third Baptist Church was founded on August the 1st the anniversary of the abolition of slavery in the British West Indies. Third Baptist was founded in 1852. But we didn't just exist in this city. We were neighbors. Emmanuel Congregation was located at Sutter and Powell. Third Baptist was located at 8. 15 Powell Street. We have continued this brotherly and sisterly relationship across doctrinal, religious, cultural, or racial lines. And we stand here today to say that this day does take on substance. God has smiled on us. The sun is shining because we have lived out what our teacher told us to do when we went to school in the elementary days. Come to school and bring your show and tell assignment with you. We are showing and telling the world how America needs to act, how America needs to live, how the world needs to be a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And as we show and tell, I trust from the bottom of my heart that number 45 will be viewing this ceremony from Brussels and be able to see how we should act and love each other and not take our children away from their parents. We are showing and telling that we have elected the right number 45. A number 45 who is a five-star sister. She is a quintessential embodiment 
of character. Competency. Chemistry with that winning smile. Compassion. She's going to do something about homelessness and not just talk about it. And most of all, she has the courage to respectfully stand her ground. If she's right, she's not intimidated by no mortal creature, for she wants to please her maker who made her and ask her for her to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. And if we show and tell, I assure you that the day will come when all of us will be able to say, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm brown and I'm sound. I'm yellow and I'm mellow. I'm red, but I ain't dead. I'm white and I'm all right. I am gay, but I'm godly. I'm straight, but I'm sensible. I'm a woman, but I'm wise. I'm an immigrant, but I'm industrious. We show and tell it in San Francisco. Lord, have mercy. A round of applause, please, once again, Reverend Brown, Rabbi Singer, for that powerful message. And I do believe the most magnificent invocation I have ever witnessed. And everyone, if you would all please rise as the San Francisco Police Safety Color Guard comes forward for the presentation of the colors. And please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem to be performed by the C Notes.
the San Francisco Public Safety Color Guard, everyone. And one more time, please, for the C notes. That was incredible. I heard somebody out there say they look like the Jacksons from back then. I heard you. All right. Now, moving on, we are going to commemorate this historic occasion with a musical selection now from the world premiere of Unbreakable, a musical chronology spanning 100 years of LGBTQ American history, commissioned to celebrate the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus 40th anniversary, and the world premiere was held right here in San Francisco at the Norse Theater last month. Please welcome performing survivors, the fabulous San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. We are survivors. Hand in hand we stand. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Beautiful performance, thank you.
And now I would like to honor some of our most distinguished guests with us today. The mayor of New Orleans, LaToya Cantrell. <laughs> Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff. The mayor of San Jose, Sam Licardo. The mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, Steve Benjamin. Mayor of Sacramento, Daryl Steinberg. London's staunchest supporters. President of the Board of Supervisors, Malia Cohen. Supervisor Asha Safai. Supervisor Katie Tang. Assessor Recorder Carmen Chu. Sheriff Vicki Hennessy. And Assembly Member David Chu. Also with us today, United States Attorney General Alex G.C. <laughs> Assembly Member Tony Thurman. State Controller Betty Yee. <laughs> Assembly Member Phil Ting. And the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Catherine Stephanie. <laughs> Jane Kim. Norman Yee. Jeff Sheehy. Aaron Peskin, Supervisor-Elect Raphael Mandelman, and Sandra Lee Fewer. Also with us, local elected officials, Treasurer Jose Cisneros, City Attorney Dennis Herrera, Public Defender Jeff Adachi, District Attorney George Gascone, also with us today, mayors from throughout the Bay Area and members of ABAG and the United States Conference of Mayors. <laughs> members of the BART Board of Directors. Members of the San Francisco Board of Education and the City College Board of Trustees. <laughs> members of the San Francisco Consular Corps. Also San Francisco's department heads and commissioners. Thank you all for being here with us today. Now, our congressional delegation wanted so much to be here today, Mary Leck Breed, but they had to remain in Washington where they are extremely busy. <laughs> Goodness knows. But they did send along their very best wishes to you on video. Let's take a look. Good morning, San Francisco. I'm sorry I can't be with you this morning to celebrate, but Senate business keeps me in Washington. But I want to offer my wholehearted congratulations to London. It wasn't so long ago, London, that you and the Benjamin Franklin Middle School Band performed for me here at City Hall when I was mayor. Today, after far too long as the only woman mayor of San Francisco, I so proudly welcome you into the club. I have every confidence that you're going to be the right leader at the right time for our city. And I know you have the passion, determination, and grit to address our city's problems and to take us to new heights. My best wishes to you today as you celebrate, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you and great good luck. Hello, San Francisco. What a historic and a happy day. London, my dear friend, congratulations on becoming the 45th mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. You are a true daughter of San Francisco, and it has been extraordinary to watch your rise as a leader and a public servant. From your earliest days in the Western Edition, to the work you did leading the African American Art and Culture Complex, to your election to the Board of Supervisors, to your election as the President of the Board of Supervisors, and now to your election as mayor of San Francisco and the first black woman in history to be elected to this position. You have always represented the best of who we are as a city, county, state, and country. 
and I know that your grandmother was one of your greatest inspirations and she raised you not only to take responsibility for your own life but also for the people in our community and that is what you have done for years and you have done it with a clear purpose to create a brighter future for our generation and the next generations. Congratulations, London. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mayor London Breed. And take this in because you have thousands of San Franciscans with you right now celebrating this historic event. And I knew you were a winner when we had coffee in South San Francisco at Pete's years ago when you were running for the Board of Supervisors. You have all it takes to go all the way. And I supported your candidacy as strongly as I did because I saw you as a healer and a leader. And we are so fortunate that you have won and that you will help bring our city together in ways we've never seen before and have it be that shining light that we all adore. So congratulations, Mayor London Breed, and congratulations to the city of San Francisco and its voters who elected you. Congratulations to Mayor London Breed on your historic election to become the first African-American woman elected as mayor of San Francisco. In these difficult and uncertain times, we need leaders with conviction and fortitude, leaders with the strength and foresight to make visionary, sometimes difficult, decisions. Leaders who know what is right and can bring people together. Mayor Breed, you are one of those leaders. I am sorry I could not be there with you to celebrate this momentous occasion, but please know that I am excited and very happy to congratulate you, and I look forward to working with you. London, I know that you will be an amazing mayor. Again, congratulations. Messages from London's mentors and sheroes, Senator Dianne Feinstein, Senator Kamala Harris, Congresswoman Jackie Speer, and Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who really went to bat for you, London. We thank them, don't we? Yeah. Speaking of going to bat, speaking of being at the plate, we do have another very special guest that I must acknowledge and introduce to you. He is the greatest baseball player to have ever played the game. Hall of Famer, the Say Hey Kid, number 24, Willie Mays is here! All right, San Francisco, it is now time for the moment we have all been waiting for. Are you ready? It is time to swear in our newest mayor. And it is my honor now to welcome to the stage San Francisco's 42nd mayor and the current Lieutenant Governor of the great state of California, the Honorable Gavin Newsom. Lieutenant Governor Newsom will now administer the mayoral oath of office to mayor-elect London Breed. Please raise your right hand and uh, if you would, please repeat after me. I, London and Breed. I, London and Breed. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith and allegiance. That I bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. That I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter the duties upon which I'm about to enter and during such time 
And during such time, as I hold the position, as I hold the position of mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am thrilled to present to you the 45th mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, the Honorable London N. Breed. Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here today. And I want to say thank you to the residents of the city and county of San Francisco for entrusting me with this incredible honor. I want to thank my colleagues from the Board of Supervisors for being here. And also, I want to acknowledge my predecessors who are here today. Mayors Frank Jordan, Mayors Art Agnes, and Mayor Willie Brown, who's head of the inaugural committee. Mayor Mark Farrell, and I also would like to thank the wives of George Moscone and Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you so much, Gina Moscone and Anita Lee, for being here today. It means a lot to me. And I want to take a moment to remember why we're here, that gracious, that amazing public servant. Mayor Ed Lee, can we please take a moment of silence to honor him? Thank you. I know we are also joined by so many mayors from all around the country, in the United States, and here in California. Thank you for being here. Our state delegation, I know. Assemblyman David Chu is here, so many amazing people, as well as members of my family. Thank you all for being here. My mother, Priscilla, is here. My sisters, Hattie and Camelia. My brother, Paul, is here. My niece, Heaven. My Aunt Linda and my Uncle Chuck are here. My grandmother's sister, my Aunt Lavinia, is here. And I want to send a special shout out to my niece, Napresha, who's been a rock throughout this campaign. I grew up just a few blocks from here, as many of you know, but a world away. A young African-American girl in public housing. My grandmother, as you know, raised me and my brothers and her daughter, my aunt Mickey, in public housing on $900 a month. The world seemed destined me for drugs or motherhood and teenage motherhood, jail, or even a violent death because of the gun violence that had ravaged our community. But my community, this city, had other plans for me. I woke up in a public housing unit. I took a public bus to a public school every day. I had incredible teachers and counselors who looked out for me and believed in me. And I walked home with some of my friends from the neighborhood, and we looked out for each other. My grandmother, Miss Camelia Brown, at the end of the day, she watched over me, just like she's watching over all of us here today. Ms. Brown was hardworking and as tough as nails. You didn't live in her house if you didn't go to school. You know, she looked out for so many people, people in the neighborhood who she would sometimes feed, and I'd wonder, Mama, we don't have much. Why are you giving away what we have? She said, because that could be us. That could be you, and that's what we do for each other. We look out for each other. When I was a freshman, in high school, 
I got a job through the Booker T. Washington Community Center. It was through the Mayor's Youth Employment and Training Program. I was 14 years old and I was hired as a receptionist to work at a place called the Family School on Fillmore Street. It helped teenage moms who dropped out of school get their GED and get a job. And I remember one day I saw the executive director, Reverend Calvin Jones Jr., writing a check to pay for his student loans. And I said, what are you doing? You're still paying for school? He said, yes. I can pay this for the rest of my life, but they can never take away my education. I can get a job anywhere doing anything I want. I stand at this podium today because a community believed in me, because our city services looked out for me. I stand at this podium because people like Ms. Brown and Reverend Calvin Jones Jr. taught me that service to others is the most important success of all. And I am here in the hope that together we can build a San Francisco where the next generation of young people can go from public housing to the mayor's office. Here in the city of St. Francis, we support one another. We look out for one another. We defend one another. Because service to others is our highest calling. I am prepared for our many city challenges to emerge. And I know that together, we can accomplish anything. I know that our challenges sometimes can get in the way of real progress. We have a booming economy. We have an amazing city where there is incredible wealth. And at the same time, it's creating a lot of challenges for our most disadvantaged residents. We have people who come from all over the world, who come to create, who are innovative, who look at San Francisco and think, that's the place I want to be. And we have failed. We have failed in building more housing to accommodate the increase in the number of job opportunities that have poured into San Francisco, pushing residents who have been here all their lives out of the city that they call home. Our streets are filled with people who unfortunately need our help who are struggling and who are frankly dying right in front of our eyes. And these and many other folks often sometimes are neglected. They need us here in this building to make better decisions. They need us to stand up and make the hard decisions to make the change to get us on the right track. We are not a tale of two cities. We are one San Francisco. And as your mayor, I will do everything I can to unite us and bring us together for the purposes of doing exactly what we need to get on the right track. And let me tell you a little bit about how I plan to do just that. I plan to reform our mental health system because we know people struggling on our streets with mental illness and addiction, that they are experiencing challenges, and it is not okay to just leave them out there to die because they have rights. Our conservatorship laws must change. It's important that we provide a guardian for people struggling with mental illness someone who can help make decisions for them when they are not capable of making decisions for themselves. I know that it's a challenging thing to do, but I am committed to doing just that. And we know that too many people are struggling with addiction. And it's not going to go away because we don't want to see it. I want to get people off the streets who are shooting up. I want to get the needles off the streets. This is why I'm proposing safe injection sites. But more importantly, I want to make sure that we have treatment on demand. 
I want to deal with this crisis in a different way. I want to make sure that we build more housing and we build more housing faster. The politics of no has plagued our city for far too long. Not on my block, not in my backyard. We have made mistakes in the past by not moving housing production forward all over this city. And I plan to change the politics of no to the politics of yes. Yes, we will build more housing. We also know that public safety is a real challenge all over our city. And yes, I am committed to making sure that we have more police officers in our communities and walking the beats. But I'm also committed to the police reforms so that we develop better relationships between our communities and our police department. The only way that we're going to be a better city, a safer city, is if we work together. And yes, there must be consequences for crimes. But at the same time, we have to make sure in this city that there are opportunities so people don't feel as though they have to commit crimes in the first place. We know that San Francisco is unaffordable on so many levels. And I am definitely committed to rolling up my sleeves and working together to get us to a better place. I've been a renter all my life. And some of you remember when they tore down Plaza East and we were pushed out at a time when my grandmother was struggling, we were trying to care for her, and it was very difficult. So many of my friends have left this city. And so part of what I want to do is change San Francisco. I want to make us a better, more affordable city. I don't want to see what happened to me and my friends in this city to continue to happen to the next generation of San Franciscans growing up here. So we have work to do. We have to reform our education system. We have to make sure that there are job training and opportunities for all young people in this city. This is a personal commitment I have because of my grandmother, because of so many people who looked out and took care of me and made me into the person I am today. I am committed to making sure that all kids in high school have an opportunity for a paid internship, for job training, so that they are a part of the future of this city. We are going to tell the president that here in San Francisco, we don't put children in cages, we put them in the classrooms. So San Francisco, we have work to do. I'm excited about this opportunity. And I know that we have had challenges of the past. And what we can't do, we can't let the politics of progressive and moderate and all of those things that have torn our city apart get in the way of our ability to deliver for the people of San Francisco. People who are struggling are depending on us. The next generation of San Franciscans, they're depending on us to be grown-ups, to make the right decisions, to do what's necessary to make San Francisco a better, cleaner place. Yes, we have to deal with many of these challenges. We have to address the affordability crisis. We have to make our transportation system better. We have to improve our parks. We have to make sure that we continue to lead the way on climate change and repair our seawall. We have to do all of these things. We have to support our small businesses. We have to keep our communities safe. We have to continue to move San Francisco forward, but doing everything we can not to leave one San Franciscan behind.
Growing up in poverty in this city, you look at things through a different lens. You look at things and you see the challenges and you think what you see is normal. Well, it's time to change what is normal in San Francisco. It's time to change what has happened in the past so that we can move our city together forward. And I know there are so many people in this city, people who feel that they don't matter, people who feel that nobody is listening, people who feel neglected, people who feel unheard and don't feel represented in this city. And I want them to know that I see them and I will be their mayor too. I want them to know. When I hear the stories from the residents in public housing in Betrayal Hill and Hunters Point about the toilets that don't flush, about the gunshots on a regular basis and their concern, I want them to know I hear them, I lived it, and I will be your mayor too. When I think about our immigrant families, people who are living all over this city, in the Mission, in Chinatown, and other places, wondering if the federal government is going to separate their family. I want them to know that I will fight for them and I will be their mayor too. For the small business owner who is struggling, and feels that they're being squeezed out by big development on one side and city government fees on another, I want them to know I will be their mayor too. For folks who feel that the quality of life has changed for them in San Francisco, our middle class families who continue to struggle to survive in San Francisco, many who are part of our labor movement and community. I want you to know I will fight for you and I will be your mayor too. Here in San Francisco, this is such an amazing city. And I want young people to know that their future will be brighter. Their opportunities will be greater. Their normal will change. I know that by working together, there is nothing that we can't accomplish. We have proven it time and time again with the craziness of what's happening in Washington, D.C. on a regular basis, every single challenge, every time it's come down. We in San Francisco, leaders from all sides, we have stood our ground and we have stood strong and proud. And I will continue to do just that as mayor, standing strong for all of our residents, bringing everyone together, looking forward to a brighter future, and working together. This will not be easy. This will require a lot of patience. It will require a lot of work, and it will require a lot of prayer. But I am hopeful. I am optimistic. I am excited about the future, about what we will accomplish because on this day, we are committed to rolling up our sleeves and working together. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I am excited. I'm fired up. Let's go do this and get to work. Thank you and God bless each and every one of you. It's a new day, San Francisco. This is your mayor, London Breed. I will never get tired of saying that. The future is female, San Francisco. Don't you forget it. Congratulations, Madam Mayor, your majesty, if I may. I felt it needed something extra. All right, everyone, we thank you so much for being here. As our ceremony comes to a close, we want to end this day with a message of hope, 
faith, unity, positivity, and the belief in a better tomorrow. And now joining the Gay Men's Chorus to make a joyful noise, the world-renowned Glide Ensemble and the Change Band. And they will be performing a gospel classic, Oh, Happy Day. Please welcome them all, please. Glide Ensemble Change Band and the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. historic occasion to witness the next chapter in the history of our great city and county of San Francisco. I also want to quickly remind you that Mayor Breed, love saying that, will be hosting a receiving line in her office, room 200, for a short period of time as we wrap here. So thank you. God bless you all. 
May God bless London. God bless San Francisco. And may God bless the United States of America. Good afternoon.